What's up everybody, I am Mongoose, you are awesome, and this is my offlane steel build and guide. I'm going to do two builds today, one for if you have a whole lot of cards, the other if you're just starting out and you don't have so many cards. And that's also the gameplay that we'll be featuring today, it will be the one with not so many cards, just to show you that you don't need all the cra you don't need you don't need Jewel of the Apostle to be successful with steel. Although Jewel of the Apostle is fucking awesome with steel, and it does help quite a bit. I will admit that. So, let's get into why off lane steel. Well, I think to be successful, any team needs a good frontliner, and you can do that with the support, or with the jungler, or with the off lane. And if you pick um, a strong frontline in the off lane, then that frees up more options for your jungler and support. So that's why I like to do off lane steel. And plus, with the version 0.40 updates, he has been um, an incredibly good offlaner as I will show you in the clips today but right now let's get to the build if this is the build with some of the um, the lesser cards whenever you don't have a huge card pool to select from you're a new player and uh, a lot of these are kind of filler what you mainly want to pick up to begin with is a health potion and a healer token if you do not have a healer token and you plan to do any kind of mid laning or off laning, I highly, highly suggest that this is one of the first cards you craft. Healer token is incredible for the off laner or the mid laner. The rest of the mana potion, you know, I get that when I can. Scout's ward, maybe sometimes I don't even get the scout's ward, I go straight to my regular ward. As far as early game cards, I have this brawler's ward, which is just a dummy ward. That's all it is. I have no upgrades in it. I drop it, go back, pick up my other cards. And then I have a Whirling Wand with two Kinetics and a Strike, and the wind, wind Carver Blade with three powers, or three minor powers, I should say. This just gives me some attack speed and power in the early game. I get rid of these pretty soon. My end game build, I go with the uh, with six cards, each with ten card points apiece. So I have an Adamant Edge with one greater power and two powers, Another Adamant Edge with one greater health and two powers. A Lord's Award decked out with health with a three greater health and two healths. It's hard to pluralize health. A Tempered Plate with one greater guard and two guards. Another Tempered Plate with a greater health, a health, and a guard. And then I have a Wind Carver Blade with a Major Kinetic and two casts. The attack speed I enjoy having on him, however, if you want to just go with straight power, that's fine as well. Going with straight power will increase the damage of your ultimate bull rush combo, which we will see when we do the gameplay. Notice I do not have any kind of ability armor in this deck. I, I rely on the ablative armor as my ability armor, and I try and keep an eye on that as I go along so that I know when I need to back the fuck up and get out of there. So, let's, go, let's move on to the more advanced deck. This is my more advanced deck for steel. I still usually go with a health potion and a healer token, although I do have two healer tokens in this deck if I need them. I normally only go with one. Then I have a strike token, scout's ward, mana potion just to fill out the deck. And um, the difference between my offlane steel build and my support steel build is the health potion and mana potion mainly. Um, I would normally be using a mender's vial and shepherd's vial to keep my carry healthy and full of mana. But since I'm just taking care of myself, I just use the health potion and the mana potion. So we go down. I use a mage's ward for my dummy ward. It doesn't matter what ward you use. I mean, it could be any fucking ward. As long as you don't put any upgrades in it, it's a dummy ward. And then as far as early game goes, I have a quartz blade with one lesser health and two lesser powers. And then I have a wind carver blade with two lesser powers and one lesser kinetic. I dump those and I pick up a wind carver blade with two powers and one kinetic and a quantum casing with three greater guards, a jewel of the apostle, this one's very important, and I usually put a greater drain and two drains in this jewel of the apostle. The drain just, you're going to be taking very little damage so a little bit of health regen from um, from the life drain, from the life steal, will help out more than you think. 
Now what the Jewel of the Apostle does, let's go ahead and do a search so we can pull it up here. It's an active. For 6 seconds, gain power equal to 35% of your ability armor. This includes a blade of armor. That's why everybody is running Jewel of the Apostle on steel now. Because it, you activate this and then you do your ultimate auto attack bull rush combo and it does a fuckload of damage. It's really, really nice. And then I also have an Honor of the Pure, and I don't put any upgrades in the Honor of the Pure. It's just a six cost card, and I usually replace my health potion with it. Now I have swing cards here. I have either an eight point purity sensor with no upgrades whatsoever, or I go with a quenching scales with one health and two lesser healths. God, that is so hard to say. And uh, depending on the team composition, and our team, you know, our, the friendly team composition or the enemy team composition, you know, if they have an Aurora, I'll probably go with the Purity Sensor. If not, I'll go with the Quenching Scales. Just depends on what they have, really. I've been uh, using Purity Sensor a lot more now with uh, with Phase in the mix because I you can activate it and um, not get blinded by her, <laughs> and it, which is nice. So let's get into some of the gameplay and basics for offlaning with Steel. We start the game off by placing our dummy ward. Now notice where I place this thing. L the wards use line of sight. What that means is that ward will not be seen by a ward that they put in the river. Conversely, that means that my ward will not see their ward and I can't deward them, but it's more about my safety than it is about trying to set up kills. I want that ward to warn me if a jungler is coming in. I don't want it to get immediately destroyed by the carry and the support if they decide to do so. So we place it right there so that the wall blocks the line of sight to any wards that they might put down. When I'm playing the jungler, I consider this offlane white camp to be my jungle camp. Now you can take both of these jungle camps if you want, the both of them that are on the offlane side of your map, but that's something you need to work out with your jungler beforehand. If, uh, if I don't work it out with them, I usually leave the other white camp for them. Now watch how I'm cutting them. It's You have you can't just hold your, your uh, auto attacks down anymore. You have to run in, hit them, and then back way up, run in, hit them, back way up. You gotta use the entire space there as you're cutting these minions in order to not take a giant amount of damage from them. Now let's go over some of the basics of defending your tower. You need to remember as an offlaner, this is true for steel or any offlaner, your job is to delay the taking of that tower as long as possible, not keep the tower for the entire game. If you are a really good offlaner and you're up against a half decent support and carry, they're going to take your tower. There's two of them, there's one of you, it's going to happen. Just, just accept that. Once you accept that fact, you will be much much better off and don't worry about what your teammates are saying it's much better to just let your tower go than to die so i want you to remember these initials jbtfu just back the fuck up if you're low on health you don't have a minion wave and they're pushing through with a minion wave just back the fuck up if your tower is about to die and you're the only one in your lane just back the fuck up if they have frozen the lane up near their tower. You don't have wards and you don't know where their jungler is? Just back the fuck up. Don't be a hero. All you're going to do in those situations is give them a kill and the tower. So instead of them getting 300 CXP for their entire team, they get 300 CXP for their entire team and a kill on you, which is probably going to go to their carry and feed them early in the game. So your main goal is to delay the taking of the tower, not prevent the taking of the tower. Now, in this game, I think I actually did hold this tower the entire time, but that's because this team is bad, and I'll show you examples of that here in a second. This is what I was talking about, about them being bad. Aurora keeps coming up very close, which allows me to run up and hit her, which pulls their minions under the tower, and lets me use the tower to help clear the minion waves before they can get in and push my tower down.
Bulwark is a great tool for defending your tower. You just put it up in the carry's face and they can't shoot through it. Exceptions, of course, are Revenant and Yin. Yin's, Yin's whip is uh, not a projectile, so it, his uh, Bulwark doesn't block it. So you have to be a little different when you're dealing with either a Yin or a uh, Revenant. If you're with one of the, if you're against especially a Revenant, um, try to stay behind your tower and stay within your minions so you can disperse the obliterate damage. I do believe they're going to change that soon so that you can block his obliterate with your shield. So uh, that will be a nice change and help you out quite a bit against that composition. The one advantage you have as an offlaner against the enemy carry and support is that you get your levels a lot faster than they do, which means you get your ultimate, like you saw just there, faster than they do. Now, I should have waited until there were um, the minions were cleared out, and that could have been far more effective, but you get the idea. You ult in, you can get one auto attack in before you bull rush. They they cannot react, so you get that. You, you ult, auto attack, and then bull rush. And uh, even though I was not, unable to get a kill right there, I was able to push them back and finally well, I thought I was going to be able to spend some points, but, uh... Looks like there's some folks in trouble, so we go ahead and rotate since our tower is pushed. And we just be a tank. We get in people's faces and chase them away. Pretty simple with the gold buff. If you get the opportunity to take it from the enemy carry, take it. Once your towers goes down, or in this case, I just found myself by myself, you need to start setting lanes. You do that by killing the enemy's ranged minion. What that does is your wave will slowly push through their wave, which will force a buildup of your own waves, causing a, a ripple effect that will make massive waves push into them, giving you the opportunity to rotate and help your team without having to be there to, to clear the lanes and defend your tower. Right here, my lane was fine. It was nice and set. I saw that Belica was in trouble, so I head in. I'm here to help. And bam, we land the ultimate, the punch, the knockback. And if, if at all possible, you want to bull rush them into a wall so that they don't, you know, fly away from you. Uh, just easier positioning so you can tee off on them. So once you have that lane set, it's time to start smashing faces and saving asses. Or saving asses and smashing faces. Whichever one. Last bit of advice, be a tank. Um, be there in front of your allies. If something needs face checked, it should be your face that's checking it. Jump into harm's way to protect your allies and set up kills. If damage needs soaked up, be the one to soak up that damage. Always be on the lookout for opportunities to help your team out and maybe even pick up a kill. <laughs> Her abilities aren't doing shit to me with a blade of armor. You can build steel as a bruiser, and that's fine for early game, but remember, your team needs a front line. You can be that front line as the offlaner, as an offlane steel. So build appropriately. I didn't really get, get a chance to in this game because it ended so fast. Enemy team ended up surrender. I went 5-0 uh, oh and 5, which is uh, pretty decent. So I hope you enjoyed the build and guide. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button for me. And if you uh, want to see more of these types of videos and my casting call videos, click on the Mongoose to subscribe. But for now, this is Mongoose signing off. You guys have a good one.